Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio. Reporting from the basement of the Dairy Civic Center, this is CM Alexander with the news. The latest updates from out west, New Vegas has been wiped off the map as a tragic gift-giving accident met with a freak storm front. There were no Skarsgård-related survivors. You're listening to Dairy Public Radio. This is Dairy Public Radio. Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio, a bi-weekly Stephen King Book Club podcast. I'm one of your hosts, CM Alexander, alongside Joshua Kahn. Hey, everybody. And Benjamin Graham. What's up, constant readers? And today we are back with another episode of The Sit, where we react to and discuss the latest episode of The Stand. Before we dive in, I just want to mention that as of the time and date that we're recording this, we are in a blizzard, and so... Josh and Ben are recording remotely from their home, so our audio quality is going to sound different this time. And Josh is leading our discussion. All right, guys. Now, we are at episode eight, episode eight titled The Stand. So for the first time, the sit's doing The Stand. We did it. (laughs) We made it. Getting into the episode proper, we start off with our survivors, our Glenn, Larry, and Ray are in a cell not really a cell they're in a cage in the middle of a room and i'm not sure why they did that instead of taking them to actual jail well because they wanted them readily available at the casino where everything's going down yeah because uh las vegas is comprised of one building (laughs) (laughs) and everything happens there what was written on them by the way it said something like weasel yes we are watching i think (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> that makes as much sense as that. Is that a reference to the weasels from the book when Mother Abigail attacked by weasels? Is it a reference to the low men, the can toy? Maybe it was an Easter egg. Yeah, but for what? Well, for the book, I think for that scene. <laughs> for the what, just you like can't ben just said. say something's an Easter egg. <laughs> well, he literally just said, "Was it a reference to the weasels in the book?" <laughs> Whatever, you guys. I love the idea that anything that is mentioned in the book is an Easter egg. Like, the trivia IMDb in this show is like, did you know Randall Flagg is in the book The Stand? It's a fun little Easter egg. Well, it's it's weird, like, with us recording remotely, like, we can see each other, and I can see the Easter egg that CM is hiding in her screen. Uh, She's talking into a microphone, and we're a podcast. What? I can't <laughs> follow this conversation at all. Okay, anyway, they're in a weird cage. Like uh fucking Hannibal Lecter. Right. Now, uh Ben, I have a question for you. We have this scene where Glenn is talking. He makes the comparison of uh, these people are just people who they followed somebody who made them feel safe, making the point, as we talked about that this series and the original mini- miniseries also miss, that Vegas and Boulder are the same for so many ways that they are different. How do you feel that came across in Glenn's little speech? There's a lot in this episode that does that they like nod to or they they say that does not actually make sense with what we have seen. They're they're just pe- people and Ray says they're evil and he goes you know, as long as we're not being reductive. Which is a funny line. <laughs> yeah, it's a great line. Love Glenn. It's also like they have a they have a gladiator pit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, they got a lot of mileage out of that pool. <laughs> Way oh more than just keeping it as a pool. It's uh, well, and have one set. You gotta you gotta make do. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the big scene is the courtroom scene. I am so happy. I'm disappointed that Lloyd ditched the wig so early because I thought that was a real solid look for him. He's a a beautiful tropical fish. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I want to point two things out in this scene. First of all, the eyes of the Crimson King. Mm -hmm. Great. I loved that. Except not. Those aren't like the, the... 
Crimson King eye that we all know. It's like a the the Kmart knockoff of that design. <laughs> it's like somebody took the design, rotated it 90 degrees, and then added a little bit to it. So it didn't look exactly like it, but it was very obvious what it was. Yes. I bet Lloyd drew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, Lloyd, I need banners with this symbol on it. And he prints them out and they're like, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> the other important thing I want to point in, out in this scene, there's a court stenographer. That seemed so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> with everything else going on and this lady talking about sh- gouging out their eyes and her words, not mine, just to be clear, fucking the holes. And she's like miming that. And she's the judge. She's supposed to be cool calm and collected and she's air humping and yeah. there's this lady right. just doing her job and she's dressed like you would expect her to be for doing her actual job i uh, okay this episode really made me appreciate rat woman <laughs> because uh rat woman's flair for the dramatic and costume changes i just i imagine if we go back if we got a flashback to rat man or to rat woman she was a theater major and worked heavily in the costume department. I'm with Lloyd. I could not tell that she was acting. <laughs> she wasn't. She wasn't at all. Yeah, we'll get Let's, to that. Uh, Sam, uh, tell us about the scene a little bit. So this is your standard kind of Judge Judy ripoff. There are a lot of witnesses there, people just observing. And Larry, Ray, and Glenn are listening to Ratwoman go on about God knows what. And Lloyd is the bailiff? He's the prosecutor, but for some reason she calls him the bailiff at the end. That's appropriate. Yeah. But yeah, she keeps saying, like, the we'll have, like, you three uh, calm down or we'll have the bailiff shoot you. And she just kind of, like, motions. And as the scene goes on and as Glenn stands up and makes his his speech about how Flag's a wiener, He's, she she finally is like bailiff shoot him and makes it clear that it's lloyd and glenn even goes lloyd i <laughs> thought you were the prosecutor <laughs> and it's so funny and belittling yeah glenn in this scene is great because they're trying to get the three to turn their backs on mother abigail because they don't know that she's dead And they're just sort of sitting calmly, and then Glenn sort of gets fed up with it, and he hops up, also very calmly, and he's just addressing the room. And he's like, you guys, don't you see what's happening here? He is ruling you through fear, and he needs you to be afraid. That's not leadership. That's not strength. That's weakness. That's cowardice. And so Ratwoman is hooting on an amazing show and just going on and on. And she's like, Lloyd, you shut him up. You shoot him. And Lloyd's hand is shaking. And Glenn's like, you've never shot anybody before. You don't have to do this, Lloyd. And I hated that Glenn died, even though I knew he was going to die. Because Lloyd shoots him in the shoulder. And I think, wait a minute, maybe, maybe they'll change it. Maybe Glenn will stick around. And even... As he knows he's going to die, Glenn's still like, it's okay, man. You're doing the best you can. and You're doing the best you can. That's <laughs> what he has. <laughs> I don't remember if he has this exact line in the book, but I do love that his final words are, uh, it's okay, Lloyd, you don't know any better, which is very obviously just Jesus's forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. I do want to say, oh, obviously, Glenn has a real point. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This bothered me. He, there are these cameras that uh, he's motioning to and saying, is he watching? Hey, why doesn't he face us himself? What's the deal? He's, he's controlling you through fear, blah, blah, blah. And it cuts up to the penthouse flag hovering in his real cool hover robe (laughs) but also just watching the court on a screen (laughs) yeah i'm like he's his ultimate evil magic devil character but he still needs a cctv (laughs) like i thought that was pretty funny there are some amazing lines of dialogue in this episode 
one of my favorites is in this courtroom scene though when glenn's like what are you so afraid of and gets them all hyped up and if i remember i think lloyd says to to the rat woman when he's like why you you're you're gonna piss him off and he's like he can fly and he ate a dude last week (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i thought that was great so great lloyd's delivery in this was spot on yeah watching lloyd just fill glenn full of holes holy shit that was so much more brutal except for that delivery <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing that like i said earlier is something they keep trying things that don't work from what we have seen lloyd shoots glenn and everyone gasps why yeah considering what we've seen as the audience they should have cheered when yeah when got shot. it's like it shows outside the casino people are watching on these giant screens on the outside of the casino and the second he shoots glenn it cuts to a like we're experiencing technical difficulties there are crucifixions daily people would want to see the right hand man of their leader kill a dude mm-hmm I again at Eager Pit. Okay. Why is this the moment that makes one random old man we've never seen concerned? <laughs> so, uh, something uh, I really like this change because in the book, Glenn dies alone in a jail cell mm. with no fanfare. It's just t- Lloyd, Flag, and Glenn. So, I'm really glad they moved this and really gave his death a little bit more meaning because it's what starts the the seed of doubt in everybody who watched it. And I think that the reason everyone freaked out is because Glenn was really getting through to them on maybe just thinking about things in a way that they hadn't really been thinking about being kind of confronted with that nasty truth. And I think they were all kind of brought back to how they would have thought about things before Vegas was like this. Brought back to reality. Mm. Yeah, it brought them back to reality, brought them back to normal. And then to watch this very emotional execution, because he's like screaming, shut up, shut up, as he's filling him full of lead. No composure, nothing. So to me, that crowd reaction showed me that people were thinking, maybe that guy is right. Like, uh, otherwise, if he wasn't right, why would Lloyd have flipped out so much? The right-hand man lost his mind for a minute. You actually just won me over with that argument. Yeah, (laughs) it actually makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes total sense because, so if people are experiencing that moment of coming back to reality, because everything's so decadent in Vegas, and all of a sudden the person who now they're relating to gets shot for thinking that way, now they're all scared because... They had that moment of connection with him where they're like, wait a minute, yeah. And then he just died brutally, so that could easily happen to them. So I could see that spreading even further, you know, more seeds of doubt and discontent in the whole Vegas crowd. That is a cool change now that you mention it, because this episode is really cool because it actually gives our three survivors a reason for being in Vegas. They actually play a part. The deus ex machina is still a deus ex machina. They each bring... Um, what, what am I trying to say? It, it means something. It's not yes. for nothing. Glenn plants the seed of doubt in the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. Jumping ahead, Larry really cements that doubt in Lloyd in particular when he is stuck in a room with a fucking gruesome prosthetic and says like this isn't this doesn't mean what you think it means it means everything's falling apart and that's what turns lloyd i just think it's cool it's a really cool change yeah it is a it is a great change and and ray is also there (laughs) okay Uh, ray and i think we'll we'll get into this this is something i hate when they do this to female characters, I think Ray is the only reason Larry stays as strong as he does because they have that moment when they're handcuffed together afterwards. And she's like, I'm a real baby about pain. Like she's so freaked out that she's going to die in a horrifying way. And 
Larry's there for her as they're facing this imminent death. Like he's holding her hands and keeping her calm. And I think if he was alone, it would have been harder for him to be strong in the face of uh, Lloyd beating the shit out of him and uh, all that pressure around him. I, I think, I think Ray kept him really grounded. And so that, was her piece of the puzzle but again i hate when female characters are used just to keep the male character strong i hate it so much Mm -hmm. no it would have made way more sense if ray had been the person to start the chant i will fear no evil yeah that would have been great three of them would have had something important that would have caused the collapse of vegas instead of using ray as just another body ray does get my second other favorite line in this when Nadine comes to see him and she just says, bitch, you look bad. (laughs) (laughs) What did you guys think of the Nadine Larry scene? Ah, that was so so (laughs) sorry. It was emotional. Like it worked for me, which is weird because their first scene that we were supposed to feel something for these two feeling something for each other didn't quite hit for me. But now this where he's just like, look at yourself, look at what he's done to you. And he helps her break the illusion by showing her her reflection and yelling at her. (laughs) (laughs) Which forces her to go into labor. Yeah. Um, Oh, you guys, I'm scared of pregnancy. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) It's just a, it's a great moment when she, she goes into labor and rat woman is her midwife, which is great. (laughs) And it clicks that she now realizes she was never meant to survive post bringing their prince into the world. And Flag tries to very haphazardly soothe her and be like, no, no, it's fine. You're my queen. But he just, I, 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 I don't know. I, what, what do you guys think really broke it for her? I feel like he he's starting to lose his power because earlier in the courtroom scene, when people were alarmed by what happened to Glenn, we see him in the penthouse come down. He, he f- kind of falls. He doesn't just lower himself. So that's sort of a visual cue of him losing his power. And so I think that his ability to mesmerize her or charm her has waned too. So I that worked for me. I thought it was in keeping with what was going on. Yeah. And, and I thought this scene was very cool up to, (laughs) uh, I love the point where Nadine is like freaking out this awful, like writhing thing in her stomach that I'm like, uh, that is it, is it Mordred? Is it just a bunch of snakes? (laughs) (laughs) Like what's going on there? But she has this moment where she finally says no, and she rips off the necklace flag's eye, and she uses it to smash through the penthouse window, which I thought was very cool. But then it's followed by her just falling out of the window in the most, like, non-dramatic. It, it, she just literally just, like, falling into a pool. It looks... What? hilarious you what <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. baffled you at that, that reaction non-dramatic I, I laughed out loud of course ben at, laughed. just the visual of <laughs> after she falls and she's like falling in slow motion i'm like oh shit that's okay but just there's the one shot of her falling through the window that i thought looked hilarious i it was just a bad stunt here's why this scene is awesome so first of all she's able to break the glass because there's power in that amulet and it lights up right before she rips it off and i think that's flag's attempt like oh i'm not so charming anymore i'm gonna you know try to get her through the power of the amulet and she feels that power and that's when she notices it again and she rips it off and i think she's trying to smash it like break the amulet against the window to break his hold over her or break his power or something or harm him and when she falls through and she is falling and you see her the slow motion part she's falling like belly first which was so uncomfortable and we see we cut to you know pov over her and she's falling towards the pool and i'm like 
okay, it's well, it's a pool. Maybe she'll be injured, but okay. <sighs> I forgot <laughs> that it's the gladiator pit pool, so there is no water in it. So she just splats. Like it is gruesome. Oh. I love that they you get that one close up, but I love that they follow that fall mostly from so far away. So you get the scope of just how far she's falling. And then Flag freaks out and then very calmly says, Lloyd, cancel the nursery. Oh, I, I was almost so excited. I was like, he's emoting. He's doing it. And, <laughs> and then Lloyd canceled the nursery. I'm like, oh, good fucking singer. Flag, you emotionless egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we take a brief cutaway and Kojak fights a wolf, which is awesome. Yep. Very good. This is, and then we come back, and this is when we find out that Rat Woman is the entertainment director. She does in a Vegas. great job too. Props and to I'm her. So glad she got that job. She was <laughs> meant again, to do that. Completely supporting your. She's a theater major. <laughs> <Yep>. Like <laughs> she was definitely a stage manager. Yeah. In high school. Yeah. I really loved my favorite Lloyd line was the scene between Rat Woman and Lloyd when they're like crying outside of the penthouse. Well, <laughs> Lloyd's crying. And she's not being very comforting. He's like, oh, my God, this is she's like, why did you shoot Glenn? You know what Flag did to the last guy who shot someone he wasn't supposed to. And Lloyd's like, why would you remind me of that? (laughs) I loved that line. Oh, it made me so happy. Uh, So uh, just real quick before we get too much further, we talked in previous episodes that by this point, Flag had already fallen apart. And we were a little disappointed that we didn't get more of that leading up to it. And I'm curious, I'm actually, now that I'm seeing this episode, I'm glad we saved it all for this one episode of it, like starting with him failing to fly and then all these little things keep going wrong for him. How did you guys feel about getting that all condensed in this one episode? I thought that the most flaggy, as we think of him, part of this episode was when he danced. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I don't that that is almost word for word what I was going to say. <laughs> almost word for word. Perfect. It was literally the best flag has been in the entire series. Uh because okay, so this is the when they're starting the the execution, and it comes so quick on the heels of something that I thought was so lame, which is how they're going to execute Larry and Ray. Uh, my fear is drowning. So it really got me, got me super hard. Yeah. They, they, Vegas they, only has the one pool, Ben. What do you want them to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They have one set. So they have to fucking use it for everything. They chain them to the bottom of the pool and then start to fill it. Okay, sure. It's no being fucking drawn and quartered, but I guess, but it, it, they start filling the pool and it starts playing this goofy club dance song. <laughs> and when it, the pool starts filling, I roll my eyes and then it hands up to flag on a balcony and he starts dancing <laughs> like, <laughs> like J pop dancing. Uh, it was so and good. It is awesome (laughs) the most flag shit he has done the entire series which makes me think that alexander skarsgård could have pulled off a nuttier flag but either that's just you know not the direction he was giving or this is he just wanted to have a different take on flag than what had been done previously i never would say that alexander skarsgård is a bad actor it's just that he hasn't been he hasn't given us anything and i wanted more the dancing man <laughs> you, you wanted his brother from you wanted the pennywise dance oh no <laughs> oh, no. absolutely i do <laughs> once again the best part of that movie <laughs> when they show a close-up of flag's smile button is it cracked yes it's cracked it's cracked it's all like the window scratched cracks. up yeah yeah it's from nadine's that was fall cool. yeah ray and larry are handcuffed to the bottom of the pool and they bring Flag out and he's talking to the crowd. And uh, I like the cuts back to Rat Woman as she's in like the studio headquarter changing the camera. Mm-hmm. And that's when Flag says that he 
shows them the airport. They they got one of the planes going, and right now there's someone on their way with glorious fire, and he's going to load it. He's going to personally get in that plane, fly to Boulder, and rain holy hell on all these people. So first, we're going to drown these rats, and then we're going to burn the witch. And that is when Larry realizes Flag doesn't know Mother Abigail's dead. I thought that was cool because it was just another display of his lack of power to us, the viewers. And I thought it was a good way to do that. Yeah. Can But can mm-hmm. we can we talk about two things? First, I just have to give props to the Nadine head prop when they bring her skull. Her All I could say was teeth, teeth. And yeah, I, her teeth are I everywhere had, in her face. I touched I, my mouth. I like had my hands over my mouth. I don't know why it didn't help, but it was just so unnerving. And then trash can man's makeup. I said this I, last episode just to imagine what he's going to look like. And I was not disappointed. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, we have to talk about trash can man entering the casino though. <laughs> he's just so sweet. He I just love means it. so well. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, I forgive all of you. I, I forgive you. Don't worry, everyone. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I I don't know how I feel about it, but <laughs> it is Ezra Miller made some choices. He in did. This, and that's you, all you can say. I just love that he's supposed to bring it to the air the airport and instead <laughs> drives it straight into the casino. That was perfect. I can I also say that I thought that the effects of the white coming, the hand, mm-hmm. it happens as a, a storm system, like this big cloud, and you kind of see these finger like things, but it's subtle. And I thought that it looked so cool. I, I don't know about you guys, but I was one hundred percent on board with the end of this episode, how they showed that. I feel like of all the things that I've talked about on this podcast, the ending of the stand is the one thing I have made my views most known on how much I fucking hate the hand of God coming down from the sky in the book and how just absolutely lame it is. It's a testament to the show that I actually enjoyed this scene. And you are completely correct. The like, just the very subtle, not having a big blue hand come <laughs> down from the sky. Just the the cloud wrapping around the casino. Very cool. And all the lightning. It, it was just, it was <laughs> neat because my, my husband was watching it with me, Devin, and he was like, what is, what is that? I'm like, well, it's the white and it's, it's this power balance and it's throughout a lot of King's other work and flag threw the balance off he was you know creating this this place that was just too evil and now we have to reset it and i thought it they did a good job of representing that with all of the the cloud and the smoke and the not lightning but speaking of we got to see a lot of people explode <laughs> yeah we did when it with the when julie is the first one we get to see and when she gets split in half with lightning, I was like, fuck, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, she, I, my first thought was uh, Julie Laurie, once again, does get electrocuted to death. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> but then so does everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> we, see, we have Julie getting zapped in half. Rat, Rat Woman gets her legs zapped off then her torso zapped off so only her head falls <laughs> which was awesome she and then the, it's like a mortal combat <laughs> yes yeah yeah and then lloyd gets his head smashed i would not have guessed a funnier more accurate lloyd way to die but the trope of dodging something only for it to swing back and crush his skull <laughs> is really lloyd it's a fitting end and then Flag, watching Flag get just zapped over and over and over until finally he turns back into his true form for just a second and then vanishes out of existence. It's, it's exactly how it plays out in the book, but I feel like uh, I couldn't help but think of that scene as someone who maybe hasn't read the book and going, wait, what the fuck just happened? Because they don't, it, it's quick. It's He gets zapped a bunch, and then he goes, monster gone. 
And it's <laughs> like a blink and you'll miss it thing. And if I hadn't known that's what happens in the book, I would have been like, that's it? What a fucking <laughs> dumb way for him to die? Question mark? <laughs> Yeah, I had to explain it to my wife because I was like, Th- there's a lot happening right here and I don't <laughs> even know where to start. But finally, as trash, as the pool is filled up and Larry and Ray are underwater, which this is why I like this death better than the dismemberment on the stage, is yes, Larry and Ray absolutely going to die because there's a nuclear bomb that's going to get set off. When they're underwater together, It is quiet and it is peaceful. And I felt like that was really doing their characters a favor, uh, sending them off the right way. I really appreciate that you found beauty in that moment. And I agree with you. I am a little embarrassed that I was thinking, well, they're underwater. Maybe (laughs) we'll. (laughs) No. Maybe they'll be. No. (laughs) It only works if you climb into a refrigerator. Obviously, they were going to die, but. I do uh, agree that it was, I I like that they have this peaceful, serene moment. And also I thought it was very cool showing the power of the white, that it is a ball of lightning shooting electricity all over this casino and they are in a pool of water and they are not struck. Yeah. Which is just a pretty cool thing. So uh, the bomb goes off as Trash is leisurely laying on it as though it's a chase lounge. (laughs) He looks so happy. (laughs) He looks so comfy. And then it cuts away so you see the mushroom cloud of the explosion Mm -hmm. and debris flying everywhere. And it comes back to Stu, who's laying there with Kojak and looking up. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's really bright. Oh, it's getting brighter. And then that dust just shoots over them. But then the most amazing thing, Tom finds Kojak and it made me so happy. Oh, that was so great. And I wish, I kind of wish the episode had ended there because then we cut to Boulder with Franny. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's no way to end an episode. (laughs) Franny and old exposition Joe. (laughs) Uh, Sooner or later, we're going to get rid of uh, ending episodes of any series ever on somebody's water breaking because it's tacky and I hate it. (laughs) Just seeing them walking away and Joe turning around and them seeing the lights in the sky and Joe just says the dark man's gone and Freddy freaks out and immediately asks for information that only serves her because Franny got a Franny. (laughs) and then her water breaks and that's the end of the episode it was a nuts one it was wild and i loved it here's the thing though is i kept waiting the entire episode i i want to hear if you guys had the same reaction waiting for something drastically different from the book to happen was that just me only because i thought the ending was different but this isn't the ending yet so i i guess i maybe anticipated that the difference would be for this part, but I guess it's going to be with whatever happens with Stu and Tom and Boulder. Yeah. After this episode was, after this episode was over, I looked at my wife and said, there are two more, if you can believe it, because (laughs) the next episode is going to be the rest of the book. And then the episode after that is going to be the brand new thing that Stephen King wrote that none of us have any idea what it's going to be. Okay. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, before we wrap this episode up, Next episode, what are you hoping for? More Tom. There's uh, one of the few characters left, so I think you're going to get it. Yeah. yeah. That's really the only thing, because after the newt goes off, I remember the rest of the book being kind of a slog. <laughs> <laughs> and and a return of Nick briefly, I hope. Yes. I hope yeah. we get the scene of Nick leading Tom away from Vegas. Well, that is it for this episode of Dairy Public Radio. As always, thank you for listening. Join us next time when we cover the next episode of The Stand. For Joshua Kahn and Benjamin Graham, I'm CM Alexander, reminding you, I will fear no evil. Hey everyone, CM Alexander here. Thank you for listening to episode 8 of The Sit. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, please follow us on social media at Dairy Public Radio or email us at dairypublicradio at gmail.com. 
And please check out our new Etsy store if you haven't already. You can find us by going to Etsy and searching Dairy Public Radio. That's all for now, listeners. Goodbye.